Hi everyone, welcome to our session. We're just going to give it one minute for everyone to log in before we start. We've got quite a few people registered. So we'll just give everyone time to, to dial in. Oh, it's nice. Is it sunny where you are, Rebecca? Uh, I am in South London. We have got some blue skies. Yeah. Yeah, I missed no. it yesterday. I don't think I saw the sun at all yesterday. And um, we, we even though I'm inside, it. my laundry is getting all the sun, which is quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> the, jo the joys of working from home. <laughs> give it a little while no I just yesterday felt like um it was kind of all gray and then before I knew it was dark you know now that daylight that's savings right, yeah. changed. I've just come back luckily very lucky from holiday and um we couldn't believe because the hours went back the night that we arrived and it was literally dark at five o'clock like dark no like beautiful sunsets but then dark and it's like oh my goodness how has this happened yeah. Oh, it's so quick autumn's just over now isn't it but it just it feels like I know it's early but it really feels like a lead up to Christmas yeah. it's only six weeks isn't it, isn't it? yeah That's I was nice. um by the Fortnum and Mason I walked by yesterday and they've done it up like an advent calendar outside oh, yes lovely. and it's just beautiful oh, I was like, oh. yeah really I nice make a trip into town for that okay I think let's make a start now so welcome again, everyone, to Peabody's Online Jobs and Apprenticeships Fair. I'm Yvonne and I work for Peabody and I'm joined today um, by mm -hmm. Rebecca, who works for the London Fire Brigade Outreach Team, and also Sam, who is a firefighter. Uh, and they'll be delivering today's session, not me. Just for you to note, uh, we're recording this event today and it will be available on Peabody's YouTube page. So all you need to do is search Peabody London on YouTube and you'll find our channel and we will have recordings of um, all 20 of our sessions as part of the online jobs fair on there as well. They'll all be up by um, end of today, um, if not tomorrow. So after we hear from Rebecca and Sam, we'll open up to Q&A. So if you do have a question, just type them into the Q&A box at the very bottom of your screen, and we'll get through as many as we can um, towards the end. And there's also a chat function for you to leave any comments as well. And before we start, I'd really like to welcome in particular any Peabody residents who are on the call and to remind you that we have a free one-to-one -one career service for all Peabody residents. So you can get help with um, looking for jobs, writing your CV, writing a cover letter, finishing job applications or preparing for job interviews, anything that you might need help with, just contact us via our website and we will get in touch with you about that one-to-one -one support. But I'll hand over now to Rebecca to kick off. Hi, good morning, everyone. I think we're still nearly at morning. Um, as Yvonne mentioned, my name's Rebecca. Um, I work for the London Fire Brigade as one of the managers for the outreach uh, team. And I've also got with me today... Hi, everyone, I'm Sam. Um, I work as a firefighter for the London Fire Brigade. Um, and I've been doing so for about the last 10 years. Perfect. So uh, again, thank you very much for signing up to come and meet us today. Uh, we're going to briefly go through um, this morning just um, the, the aims of the session are. We just want to increase your understanding of what firefighters actually do. There's a lot of stereotypes and myths about the role. Uh, we're going to give an overview of what behaviours and skills we're looking for in our firefighters and hopefully uh, give you a little bit more knowledge around the application process and how you can apply. Um, now we've got a lot of information to get through. We fully encourage you to put your questions out. Sam will do her best to be answering those questions as we go along. Um, I would encourage you, if you don't have one already, just grab a pen and paper so you can make some notes as we go through. And at the end, we will absolutely have some time where you can answer uh, some direct questions as well. So we're going to start off with what actually do firefighters do? So um, there is a basic criteria that you need to fulfill before you can apply it. So we'll go through uh, these. Uh, you do need to make sure that you have got the right to work in the UK with no work restrictions. We will be giving you our outreach mailbox address. So if any of you that are interested in the role 
have any particularly you know individual queries about this please email us and we can let you know you also need to be free from any unspent criminal convictions again if this is a cause of concern for any of you please get in contact with us directly we can give you a link so if any of you do have any criminal convictions you can check just to make sure that they're spent now, beards are immensely fashionable at the moment, but we also understand for religious, spiritual and personal reasons, uh, people, you know, have beards. And um, it is a requirement that you do need to be clean shaven to be able to join the fire service. And that is because when you're wearing your breathing apparatus, that is the mask that fits over your face to give you oxygen when you're at an incident. Um, unfortunately, when there's facial hair there, it, it prevents it from sealing. Um, so if you were successful in our recruitment process um, from your first day of training and went on duty, you would need to be clean shaven. You do need to be 17 and a half uh, to be able to apply. That is on the premise that you need to be 18 uh, should you be successful and get to our training schools. Now, one change that we have seen recently in our recruitment process is that you do need a UK manual driving license to apply. Now, if any of you don't have one, I would still encourage you to stay for the rest of this session so you can look at preparing um, and you can look at going to stage one of our process, which I will explain later. But actually, when it comes to physically applying for the role, you would need that UK manual driving license to apply or an international equivalent which you could convert during our application process. The other basic requirement for the role is that you do need maths and English skills to a GCSE grade A to C, or in the new numbers around a nine to four, or any international equivalent. Now, we never ask you for any qualifications, but you do need that ability to be able to pass some of our recruitment testing. So, they are the basic, basic criteria that you need to become uh, able to apply for the London firefighting role. Now, we're going to go over what that actual role is, because, again, um, a lot of people, there's a lot of myths and stereotypes. So either on a piece of paper or in the chat box, if you've got that facility, uh, what I want you to do is just think about why do people call the fire brigade? Why do people call 999? Um, and just see if within those of you that have uh, that have joined us today, just get some of your your ideas or your feedback. And Sam, if you're able to read any of those, if you could let me know. And again, if you feel a bit shy, don't worry. Just have a think about what they are and what types of incidents firefighters might go to when people call 999. Do we have a quiet chat box? At the moment, yes. OK, we'll put some of them up. Again, some of you may have wrote, written these down. Um, if you choose to be a London firefighter, these are some of the emergency incidents that you might go to. Now, we do encourage, if you are wanting to apply, that you would go on and do some additional research to find out what some of these incidents are. Our Facebook pages, our social media, so things like Twitter and our website, they are all updated daily with incidents that are happening around London so you can get a really good feel of the types of things that you'd be going out to. So, of course, obvious firefighters will be going out to fires, but there's a huge variety of where those fires may be, who they're affecting. We do a lot around road traffic collisions, also things like rail derailment. So it's a really good idea to further your understanding of the variety and the ever-changing types of incidents that we go to. Now, when firefighters aren't attending those emergency incidents, um, they're also going to be going out doing prevention and protection work. So again, I want you just to take a few seconds and think about what types of incidents they may, they may be. Again, if you want to write them in the chat box, you can, or just have a think about what other things firefighters are doing when they're not at those emergency incidents. We'll have a look if anything appears. No, okay. So a large part of what firefighters do now is that prevention and protection and, and what that's resulted in is a lot less emergency incidents, which is where we want to be. 
Um, so when you're not out and about at those 999 calls, it may be that you find yourself doing a home fire safety visit. Again, you can find more information about those on our website. You can also do your own visit as well to check that your, your home is safe. Um, they might be doing prevention work with young people. Again, it's really important that you research and look at the key messages that firefighters might be delivering with younger people and also the prevention that they work, uh, work that they do with at-risk groups. So that might be attending um, a retirement home or somewhere where there's maybe people uh, with mental health um, additional needs or physical disabilities to make sure that they're accessing the services of the London Fire Brigade. You may also find that you attend community events that you need to do inspections uh, sometimes of buildings, but also of the hydrants because they are what the fire engines, the fire appliances connect to when they go out to the incidents as well. So lots of checking, response planning, risk assessments, and working with London's local communities to make sure that we're keeping them safe. Now, again, when they're not doing those two things, you might think about what do firefighters do? Uh, we are gonna talk about the shift system uh, shortly, but part of your responsibility of being a London firefighter is that you maintain your fitness levels. Um, we do include fitness tests as part of our recruitment process, which I will touch on. But every, uh, every station in London has its own gym facilities. Now, if any of you are members of the higher end sort of club, so things like our David Lloyds and our Virgin Actors, you may find that the gyms look slightly different on station, but what they do all have is your basic uh, equipment to be able to keep yourself fit and well. And gym time is scheduled in to your shift pattern to make sure that you're fit and able to respond to those emergency incidents. Um, it is worth noting that you could be, you know, having that hour in the gym and you're on the treadmill or you're doing a chest press and those emergency alarm goes and you need to be up, out, sweaty or not, in your uniform on that fire appliance going out to an incident. Now, other things that you'll be doing, there is a lot of routine work in the fire service. So equipment checks are a really important aspect of the job. If your equipment or the appliance that you're working with is not fully what we call fully stowed or the equipment isn't working effectively, you could ultimately be putting your own life or others at risk. So it is really important, those equipment checks. It is a very routine part of the job. And what we're looking for is people that can do that responsibly. Um, unfortunately, in this line of work, you can't go, oh, I'll do that later. Or, yeah, yeah, I've done it when you haven't really. Because, again, the implications are quite serious if that work's not done. So Again, it's thinking about is that something that you would be willing to do? Now, the incidents, policies, legal practices, they all are constantly changing within the fire brigade. So you will find that you'll be doing a lot of drilling and a lot of training. Now, as you can see in the picture, a lot of those drills will be practical. It will be keeping your, you up skilled. It will be making sure that you learn and develop constantly throughout your career in line with those changes. Um, <clears throat> some of the training will also be uh, in a classroom based. So you may find on your night shifts that you'll be doing some inside lectures. And surprise to a lot of people, there is a lot of study with the fire brigade to keep yourself up to date, and particularly during the apprenticeship period, which is the learning period um, if you were employed. There is some report writing, there is some admin as well. Again, a lot of people don't realise with that job, um, you could be at a station where there are no emergency incidents during your shift. OK, so it's thinking about is that something that you'd be able to deal with? You could be placed at a station where you're in and out all day long on emergency incidents. So um, it's not quite the stereotypical view where, you know, you're up, you're out all the time, being a hero, spraying water, um, that we are now focused a lot more on the prevention side of things so that we don't have those incidents. Now, we get asked a lot about the pay scale. So as you can see, this is up to you to make a decision as to whether this would be feasible for you. Everybody starts uh, their London Fire Brigade journey as an apprentice um, and your, your, your payment, your salary starts on the first day of training. So should you be successful through our recruitment process, 
Um, we will negotiate a training school start date with you. And for 11 weeks, Monday to Friday, typically 8.30 till 4.30, we will be teaching you the basic safety requirements to keep you safe as a firefighter on a local fire station. And as you can see, the salary for that is uh, just under 29,000. These do include London waiting. Now, after your 11 weeks, we have what's called a pass out ceremony where you get to celebrate your achievements and then you're assigned a station. Now you can request stations, you can have a preferred station, but you might not necessarily get it. What you will get during training is a station that is on a good transport route for you. But other things are taken into consideration about your exposure to certain incidents, um, which will help enhance your learning. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, once you're on station, we do add just over a thousand pounds to your salary. And then it takes approximately 18 months uh, to work through what we call your book. Now, during that time, you will be on a station doing all of the things that firefighters do. You'll have a diamond on your helmet, uh, which indicates to other people um, that you require a little bit of additional support to help you get through that book, which is lots of different training requirements until what you what is called a, you become competent at a firefighter level. And again, as you can see, the salary for that is just over 38,000. Now, a lot of people stay as firefighters um, and they may wish to use um, secondary employment or spend time off with family and friends, um, and they stay at that level of salary. Now, for those of you that are in the group that may be interested in management perspectives or different ways of being able to develop your career, you can see on there, we have a rank structure in the Fire Brigade, and you can see how the salary increases as you go through that rank structure. Now, some of you, if successful, may decide that you want to go into management, but want to stay on a fire station. Now, our leading firefighters, sub-officers and station officers will typically still ride the fire engines, the fire appliances, but they'll have more of a managerial capacity. You may decide that you want to progress from there and become a station commander. That means you're in charge of one or two uh, stations. You will no longer ride the fire appliances, but you will still go in a separate vehicle to all of the major incidents. Now, You've got more of a managerial capacity about the health and safety of your station, getting more involved in community decisions. And then you may want to progress to coming off the station to being what we call a group commander. That means that you'll be in charge of a borough. Um, and again, you will just intend the major incidents. Now, at each one of these levels, you may also decide to go sideways. So Sam, who is on the call with us today, has just finished a secondment that she did with us with the outreach team. There's different ways that you can go into policy. You might want to go into one of our specialist teams, again, which have got different money attached to them. Now, like any company, um, you have to show the skills and the dedication to be able to move up the ranks. And like with any organization, you don't start at the base level and go to CEO in a matter of months. Uh, some of these positions may take years, but there's no reason at all that you can't aspire to be the chief commissioner who will be on a lot more than 55,000. So there is definitely opportunity to earn money. Now, some of those other career opportunities that could be available to you, um, all of these are available once you are competent and some of them you have to be at a certain rank to be able to apply. Now, those of you that are on the call that like technology, equipment, um, urban, search and urban search and rescue might be something you're interested in. They are a specialist team that will go to locate life um, or unfortunately if people have uh, you know, died during incidents to be able to go out and track where people are or animals. Um, they have got articulated truckloads of equipment and gadgets to be able to, to do that, to be able to manoeuvre. And they also have a team of dogs that work with them as well. Those of you that are a bit more detective, a bit more CSI, you may be interested in the fire investigation teams. They are absolutely instrumental to the education of the fire service and making sure that uh, we learn and that we prevent incidents from happening. Um, they will go out after an incident. Uh, the fire dogs that you can see in the picture belong to them. Um, and what they will do is they'll detect what started the fire, what was the accelerant. 
A lot of their reports and testimony are taken to court uh, for criminal proceedings. Um, but again, their information is also passed on to other teams that work to learn and help prevent things from happening again. Any of you that have got an engineering interest may be interested in the regulation, uh, fire safety aspect of the fire brigade. So not only do those teams go out to enforce fire safety regulations on things like hospitals, prisons, schools, new housing that is being built, uh, but they will also be instrumental in advising if there is big events happening. So something like the Olympics that was held in London a few years ago, they would have absolutely been involved in that. And like I say, this is a good pathway for those of you that are interested in engineering. We also have tech, tactical advisors, specialist teams. We have a water boat. Um, and again, it's about starting to research and look about what could a career in the fire brigade look like for you. Now, in terms of the salary, um, typically as a firefighter, you work around six months of the year, um, which makes that salary a little bit more attractive. Um, and what happens is if you're successful, once you join a station, you will join what we call one of four watches. So we have the blues, the greens, the reds, and the whites. And once you join that watch, as long as you don't change color, you can predict your uh, rota for the next 15 to 20 years. So it's really, really good for planning. Um, and typically you will work two day shifts. As you can see, they start at 9.30 in the morning until eight o'clock at night. That will be followed by two night shifts, eight o'clock at night until 9.30 in the morning followed by four days off. And that rota just keeps going and keeps going. Now, during that typical day shift, you've already seen some of the things that you'll be doing. There's the training, there's the home fire safety visits. Um, and during the night, you'll be doing uh, same sort of things. So you'll still be coming in, maybe doing a, a lecture. Um, you will absolutely, during the night, be going out to emergency incidents. So have a think about, you know, cold, wet, or even really hot outside, uh, middle of the night, middle of the day, as soon as those alarms go off, you are up, you are in your gear, and you are on your way to an incident. So again, think about, is that something you'd be prepared to do? Now, during the night shift, we're obviously not going to be going out to schools or knocking on people's houses, uh, you know, to come and do fire safety checks. So we have what's called a rest period between 12 midnight and around 6.40 in the morning. Um, now, we do have on each station separate facilities uh, for males and females. Um, some of the facilities, you'll have your own single room. Other are dormitory styles, but we do have separate facilities for males and females. Now, during that time, you could rest. But again, if that emergency alarm goes off, you are up, you are out. Now, some stations, you might be up and out all night long. Other times, you may actually get to rest during that period. Um, so Sam, I'm going to hand over to you to talk about what people may be doing in their off-duty days. Yeah, so um, we have a lot of firefighters who have secondary employment, which is um, that you get permission from the brigade to do that. So it might be that you are an electrician or um, we have window cleaners, we have taxi drivers, we have accountants, all sorts of things, things that people do on their days off. Um, other people, you know, um, have family commitments, so they might be doing that. And then we also have people that study on their days off. Um, so we do get sort of those four days off, and it is a really good opportunity to use them to do something other than being in the fire brigade, as long as it doesn't impact um, the fire brigade. So what they don't want is you working um, obviously really, really hard on all of those four days off and then coming into the fire station really, really tired on your first day. So um, as long as it's sensible, you can do secondary employment. Um, or any, anything you want to do on your days off, really. Thank you. Now, obviously, this is really great, but there is a downside to this. Um, the Fire Brigade is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week service, and um, that means that one of these days that you're working could fall on a special occasion, a birthday, a religious holiday, or any holiday that you celebrate. And although you do get additional leave, um, and you can request, uh, you know, leave. It could be particularly on some of the popular holidays that that leave may get refused because we have to keep what's called operational capacity. So that is the downside. Now, most firefighters, I'm sure Sam will agree that, you know, working on those popular holidays, I'll take Christmas as an example, 
or Diwali that's just passed, they're actually quite a nice time to be on station because one, you are there, you know, when people have incidents on days like that, um, you know, it can be really traumatic and they are so extremely grateful, you know, to have people there to support and keep them safe. But also you get a lot of people bringing things into the stations, you know, who are really appreciative of the service that you give. So you just have to decide, is that something that you'd be, you know, be prepared to take on? Now, in the fire brigade, um, you do see things that can be traumatic and can be sort of distressing. And we have a lot of support mechanisms in place for that. Now, you can see some of the groups that are there at the moment. Um, we have uh, our workforce is becoming more and more diverse. And we obviously work in London, which is a very diverse community. So once you join the fire brigade, as you can see, there are different groups that you might identify with. But I'd also encourage you to look at some of these groups and offering your support as an ally. So you may not be a female, but you could want to help to contribute to make not only the communities and the services that we offer more diverse and inclusive, but also the workforce as a whole. Um, so we have got lots of different uh, support mechanisms uh, in the service. Now, if anybody has got any additional learning needs, again, don't let this put you off. Um, we are looking for a diverse range of skills and that includes different ways of thinking, different ways of processing information. Everybody will go through the same processes in our recruitment uh, process. But if you do have additional uh, learning needs, we will ask you that at the point of application. And if you do, please don't worry, please be open. And um, if you've got any documentation or statements or reports, we would ask you to forward those to us. It will be passed to our learning support team and we will look at what reasonable adjustments can be made. Uh, we do have legal perimeters that we have to stay in just to make that uh, recruitment process fair and equal for all. Once you're in the service, we have, um, we have very good, we have work to access, sorry, access to work and other different support groups that can help uh, with learning, particularly during the apprenticeship, which can be quite heavy on the academic learning as well. So please don't let that put you off uh, joining. Now, as it currently stands, this is a brief overview of our selection process. Now, if after this call, you decide that you want to apply for the firefighter role, we are going to be putting our email address up at the end and you will contact us um, and we will book you in for an extended version of what we're telling you now. Once you've been to that session, we will send you some materials to review and have a look at. And if you go, yep, yeah, this is what I want to do, uh, we will notify you of when recruitment opens. We'll check that you meet our basic criteria. And if you do, we'll send you some online English and maths tests to complete at home. Now, once you attend stage one, we do send you some preparation materials so that you can help prepare yourself uh, to be able to do those. Now, once you've done those successfully, we'll then invite you into one of our test centres where you'll do a verification test uh, just to make sure it was you that did those online tests. We also interview, we do a role play and a written exercise just to make sure you demonstrate the skills that we are looking for in the firefighter role. Once completed that, you go on to our work related physical test. We do have links on our website so that you can have a look at videos of those. Uh, so you can get clear on what that is. And also after attending stage one, we will um, give you an opportunity for a training program. And again, point you in the right direction for those links. Hopefully successfully complete that. We then do a medical. Uh, we check your references and do a DBS, which is a background check. Um, and again, once all of that is complete, we then negotiate a training start date for you to start your career with us as an apprentice firefighter. Now, six weeks before you join with us, we send you some pre-course material just to familiarise yourself with. We invite you to a welcome day to meet your, your people that you're going to be training with, question and answer session, look at your learning style, fit you with all your equipment, and just basically, it's like an induction. Once that's happened, you then start training school where you're with us, as mentioned before, for those 11 weeks. Very intense 11 weeks on the job training, uh, very rewarding, but it will absolutely take you out of your comfort zone. Um, and then, like I said before, after those 11 weeks, you then join a station. 
Now, this is probably one of the most important slides. This is what we're looking for in the fire brigade. But I would also, if any of you are looking for any job, I don't think there's any, any employer that would say no to any of these. And again, what I'd invite you to do is to really look at these, Google them, dictionary definitions, really look at what does teamwork mean? What is compassion? What is empathy? Um, and really start to look at where you've demonstrated those. Now, the bottom two, uh, we've touched on diversity and inclusion. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit more later. But really, it's about having self-awareness, knowing what your strengths are, knowing what you can bring to an employer. Now, for some of us, particularly if we've not got confidence, you know, where it should be, or sometimes we just don't recognize our own skills, it's really important to talk to friends, family, people that you work with and go, why do you value me? What is it that I bring? Why do you enjoy working with me? Um, and bring those sort of skills to your interview. Um, it's a lot easier to say people tell me that I'm reliable, that they trust me, that I keep my word. Um, you know, it's a lot easier to talk like that in an interview where you don't feel like you're bragging because ultimately this is a really competitive process as most job applications are now. And you've got to think about how are you going to stand out? So think about all of those transferable skills, um, any job that you've done, even those of you that haven't worked and maybe have been at home for a little while, think about where you have had to demonstrate these skills. We are also going to be looking at how you retain and recall information. Very important in the firefighter role. Your officer in charge may give you a list of commands that you need to follow and remember to be able to keep somebody alive. So throughout our processes, we are constantly testing you on that ability. So again, just consider where have you demonstrated these skills? Where do your strengths lie? What examples have you got? And really get clear on what you're bringing to the service, what you can offer. Now, we've touched on the work-related physical tests. As you can see, there's pictures. Our work-related tests are done in the uniform that you can see. So when you come to stage one, we do go a little bit more into depth of this, but you can go onto our website and have a look. And if any of you are considering and you want to start training, you know, fitness wise, all of our tests are functional. There's no bleep test. There's no drop down and do 100 press ups. It's all functional to the role. So can you climb a ladder and follow an instruction? Can you drag this weight from one place to another? Can you pick this equipment up and carry it for a certain amount of time? Are you OK in a dark, confined space? And can you put something together quite quickly? So some of them have time restrictions. Uh, I do encourage those of you, especially those of you that are, are very fit already in your preparation to put your big coat on and maybe a pair of wellies or big boots uh, while you're training for this, because that is essentially what you'll be tested in. Um, so again, further details of this are on our website. Um, we have talked a little bit about the apprenticeship. It is quite a challenging and demanding part of it. But like I said before, it's a great tool for self-development. And during those 11 weeks, you'll be learning all of the stuff that's going to make you a firefighter. So as you can see in the pictures, you'll be working with the breathing apparatus, the equipment that you know teaches you how to pe put people out of vehicles, working with the hoses, you know, connecting them, the appliances. But once you've finished doing that during the day, which is quite physical, so you can't let your fitness go, in the evening, you're required to do some academic work, probably two to three hours of work that you'll be tested on the next day. And that is quite an intense period. But again, we have support systems in place for you, uh, you know, to make sure that you are supported through that process. You do move across three of our training venues. So we have one at Park Royal, one at Harrow and one at Plasto. Again, we go a little bit more detail into this during that stage one information session, but it's just to give you an idea of what that process is. Now, some of you may have listened to this and thought, oh, that's not what I thought it was. Um, we do have other roles within the fire brigade. And as you can see, like any other organization, we have got finance team, IT, HR, but we also have control. They are the people that will answer the 999 emergency calls. Uh, we also have education teams, community safety teams, and part of the fire investigation team where you don't need to be a firefighter, but go out and do sort of building checks. So I'd invite you also to have a look on our website at our careers page. 
And that careers page is updated constantly. So you may go on one week and see nothing. And then the next week you may, you know, see a, a few things. Um, so definitely spread the word for us around that. And then the last thing I want to talk about before we go through to questions and answers is we also do have volunteering opportunities. Um, now, we can't have you to volunteer and come in as firefighters because of the training involved, but we do run a cadet programme, which now runs in most London boroughs. Again, you can find details of this on our website. And this is a really good way not only to give back to the community and work with the young people that participate, but it's also a really good way to boost your resume and CV. Uh, maybe if you've been out of work for a little while or you're looking to get into new kinds of work. So the cadets are groups of young people from the local community that meet once a week. And they come and uh, you go along as a volunteer and you help share your skills and knowledge with them alongside firefighting staff to help them work through their cadet program. So that's also a, an option as well. I'm gonna guess that we're coming towards the end of 20 minutes. Is that right? Yes? That's right. Thank you, Rebecca. No, no, it was um it was super interesting to hear about all the different stages. Sam, did you want to add your part in as well? Just be great to hear from you as a as someone on the field. I can do. Um, so I can just tell you a little bit about me. So um, I, as I say, I started working with Fibergate 10 years ago. Um, I've got a fitness background, so I used to work in a gym and, and do that. <clears throat> so for me, um, I chose the fire service because... I wanted a job where I could help people, which obviously I get to do most days. Um, but I also wanted not to be in an office. Um, I wanted something that was practical where I could be outside. Um, and I get to do it obviously every day. So every day is different for me. So I'm not, you know, I'm not in an office nine to five. I obviously work shifts, which I like. Um, and when I turn up at work, I don't know whether we're going to be going out to a visit. I don't know whether we're going to get an emergency call. Um, that emergency call could last 10 minutes. It could last four hours. Um, so I really like the fact that I don't know what's what's going to happen in my day. Um, things I really love about the job, I love working in my team. So the team becomes sort of a family, really, um, which means there's a lot of um, joking around. We have a lot of fun, um, but we also support each other. So when we go to those difficult incidents, we have a, a chat around the dinner table and um, and look after each other. So it's really like going from my home with my family and I go to work and I get to see my work family, which is really nice. Um, yeah, I, I would highly recommend it as a job. I think it's great balanced work life. Um, and yeah, couldn't recommend it highly enough. Oh, that's so wonderful. Sam, so, um, just before we wrap up, what would you say is the most rewarding thing about being a firefighter? Um, I suppose everybody thinks about the heroics of it. Um, they aren't as um, common as you would think. I'd love to say that we're running into fires, dragging people out every day, but that's just not the reality. I think for me, it's the small things. Um, you know, it is turning up at an incident and just uh, sort of being able to help someone um, that's having probably a really, really awful day. Or it could be as simple as going in and doing a home fire safety visit to an elderly person that maybe hasn't seen anyone for a few days and they have a little chat as we're putting their smoke alarm up. And that for me um, is probably one of the most rewarding parts is going out to people like that and just knowing that you're making them safer, um, but then also just, you know, having a chat with them and, and, and being a, a good part of their day. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. We didn't get very many questions, um, but I can see, uh, Rebecca, that you've put up this last slide. Did you want to just uh, mention what everyone should do if they do have any further questions after today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if, if you want to just make a note of the outreach at london-fire.gov.uk, if you are interested in finding out more um, and sort of, you know, then please email us. Just mention that you've been at the Peabody event and we'll send you dates. They're all online, uh, similar to this on Zoom. And you can sign up for one at your convenience and come and find out more. And that is your, uh, that's the only route to be able to apply at the moment. Um, and yet any questions at all, please just email us and we'll gladly get back to you. Thank you so much. And just for everyone to know, again, all of these slides will be available on the Peabody website by tomorrow. The recording will be on our YouTube page. And um, we still have a whole afternoon of sessions. So if you'd like to join any of the other ones, just go onto the Eventbrite page that you would have gone on to register for today and you can join other sessions this afternoon too. But thank you so much, Rebecca and Sam. That was super interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.